Hi, I'm Vahid Razavi with BizCloud. Today we're here at Bradley Manning Plaza, formerly known as Justin Herman Plaza, where a number of protesters have gathered to protest the ongoing surveillance by National Security Administration on their digital rights and freedom. We're going to go ask a number of these protesters what their views are and why they're here today. Why are you guys here today? Well, actually, it's funnily enough, I'm actually here for Gabriel, because from my perspective, it's not about what's happening now. As, as Edward Snowden said, it's a matter of a couple changes of policy and the repository of information that they're building up on us becomes a very interesting tool for potential oppression. So I, I value our country's constitutional rights. I think that they are well entrenched and well established and well designed. And I think that the, the current activities that have the NSA and the surveillance state that's being built around it subverts those fundamental rights, particularly the Fourth Amendment, which is, which is about unreasonable search and seizure and probable cause. So I'm here to defend those rights so that I can pass those on to him. Well, we're protesting the mass surveillance that's cool been recently revealed that the NSA is conducting against the American people. And essentially they're uploading our okay. communications data and storing it uh, permanently. It's keyword, in, it's keyword indexed and that means at some future date they could all search the database and pull out, for example, anyone who ever criticized the government, anybody who ever criticized a particular political uh, appointee or official, and Very there's true. no telling where this is going to end. And already, already story. people are becoming afraid. I know people that were afraid to come here today, afraid they'd get on a government watch list. Sixty days ago, Americans weren't afraid, and this is starting to creep in like a poison into our system, only 60 days in. We need to stop this and, t and, t and, take, and take back our democracy. Okay. There's indication in the media that some of this data is now being shared with governments overseas. And, and that the NSA is sharing it with other governmental agencies, and other governmental agencies are sharing additional data on us with NSA. Essentially, we now, and we're learning this just in the last 60 days, we now all have a permanent record. You remember back in high school, they'd say, well, it's going to get on your permanent record. It turns out we really now do have a permanent record, and it really is permanent. And it's on even, even my children. Every phone call they make, every email they send, and if we don't stop this now for the rest of their lives. They were born free, but are they going to be free next year? I, that's why I'm here. How do you feel knowing as a third-party defense contractor may have access to your private records? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely concerned in general about the proliferation of the defense industry, uh, their control over government through whether that's lobbying or campaign finance. And it's something I've been I've been uh, cautious of for a while, whether that's uh, drone usage, whether it's the intelligence community. And so, you know, I, I definitely think that's something that should be reined in. All right. And later on, you're going to be marching over to Nancy Pelosi's office. What do you expect that would happen there? What's your message to Nancy and other elected officials? Well, I don't expect much to happen today. I do feel like uh, that the representatives from both sides who voted against the Amash Amendment uh, have, you know, failed their constituents. I think that if they look at, at the uh, popular uh, polls out there these days, they look at the letters that are, they're receiving from their constituents, and if they actually just think about it themselves long enough, they realize that not only are they representing themselves well by voting uh, for the Amash Amendment, but they're, you know, uh, representing their constituents well if they support in uh, reigning in the NSA. So I am a member of the organization Street Strikers and Demand Progress. And we're here because we think the NSA protests are shining a light on legalized bribery. Specifically, there was an article that came out recently that showed that the members of Congress who voted against the Amash Amendment that would reign in the NSA received twice as many campaign contributions from the defense, defense industry as their anti-NSA counterparts. So we want people here to recognize that this is not just about spying, this is not just about constitutional invasion, this is also about getting money out of politics and ending the corruption that holds Thank our politicians so accountable to special like interests to, uh, and not to the people. You know, the defense industry has our government in a vice grip. Uh, and some of the, the numbers, I think, coming out of the last election cycle are very startling. You know, $13 million were donated to members of Congress alone in the last election cycle by defense giants. Those numbers are exponentially bigger once you start going down the line. And I think that starts to explain why this problem is where it is today and why people are finally starting to realize that there are some really controversial and, and you know, policies that aren't good for the people happening. Um, because the defense industry, I think, just has too much of a, a vice grip on our government at this point. I see. Now the group is going down to march to Nancy Pelosi's office. What message do you have for our elected officials? So I want Nancy Pelosi to be responsible to me, the person who elected her, not necessarily to defense industry or special interests. Nancy Pelosi received $47,000 from the defense industry in her last run for Congress. I want to know if that means that she responds to them rather than me, and I want to let her know that 
I stand against NSA spying and I want her to hear that message. In 2003, when I was transferred to 611 Folsom Street, was working at the AT&T Internet Room, and I discovered they had installed a splitter cabinet which contains splitters. Splitters are just glass prisms that split the laser light beam that carries the information on the internet. And each half of the split contains all the information. And one split went on its way as it was supposed to, and the other half went to the NSA secret room. Yeah, well, I think that it's very clear that the um, original the intentions of the law have been stretched. Um, uh, heard a lot the motivations for why that's been stretched is not, not clear, but the rationale of defending uh, against terrorism through the Patriot Act uh, and the FISA court uh, is clearly now being extended to include U.S. citizens. Uh, the idea that uh, there is nothing worse than terrorism, that 9 11 well, is yeah, not true. Because they was... are not just collecting metadata on every American, bad as that is. That does give them enormous power and blackmail power, but that's not what they're mainly doing. They are collecting, as Mark Klein put it, every word you say on email. It's being recorded. Is it being listened to in real time? As President Obama tells us, we're not listening to you. Kidding, kidding. To listen to have one person listening to every two people on a phone line would take more people than he really has, even in NSA. No, he's TiVoing it. Well, these, this data should not be collected at all. There is no reason for it. They have found minimal um, uh, success in finding, finding Al-Qaeda. I think maybe there was like one case of a plot that they discovered through these means. That isn't what's really going on. What's really going on is they want to collect all of our data, and that is a means of control. I, I think that we're going to keep protesting. I think that we have to do some armchair activism as well, and you know, sign petitions, and 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 let Congress know that uh, we we expect change. That's one of the big things I'm doing with my documentary. And we actually have a, a website right now, trackoff.us, where people can petition congressmen to see the movie. Because I really don't think that people sitting on Capitol Hill even understand how these systems work. Uh, look, I mean, if, if General Petraeus, the head of the CIA, didn't understand how Gmail works, like what hope do the rest of us have? My message for Nancy Pelosi is, is show some courage. Uh, you know, this is San Francisco. Most of the people here are absolutely opposed to the NSA doing what they're doing. And that's across the country. The polls have shown that people are more concerned about spying than they are about security right now. So that's a big shift. And Nancy, please reflect that or we will take you out of office. I think that we understand and sympathize with the need to protect us, and we certainly agree that in the age of computer science that it's very necessary to do everything you can to protect the citizens, but I think that people now are leery of what they feel is a, a hand that's bigger than Big Brother coming out into their living rooms and onto their telephones. We applaud our elected officials for, the, for trying to protect the citizens, but at the same time, if we can't have ultimate faith in the government in terms of who's going to be in power next. We don't want to have a benevolent dictator. You know, we, you know, personally, you know, I understand that Nancy Pelosi is trying to do her job, I, but at the same time, for the future of the country, we don't want the federal government to have so much information about individual citizens. Everybody who knows that the truth is being concealed should consider whether this is not the time for them to speak out and to do it in ways that will both capture public attention, especially with documents, and protect themselves from retaliation. That's what I would tell them.